Right, this is part two of the predicted paper two for June the 8th at Excel, um, done with the help of Math Genie, who put this predicted paper up on the website. Really good website. Go on there, do use it. I, it's brilliant. Whoever does it is a genius. Here we go. Question 10, first nine I've done already on part one, so have a look at that if you want to. Now, it says, all right, that we're going to... You've got a circular trundle wheel, right? It's a radius of 20 centimetres, and it's going to turn 34 times, right? I need my answer to correct to the nearest metre. So first thing I'm going to do is say that that's 0.2 metres. Okay, 20 centimetres, 0.2 metres, 100 centimetres in a metre, all that sort of stuff. Um, pi R squared sounds like area to me. If I need the circumference, I'll use pi D, or cherry pies, delicious apple pies, R2, whatever you want to do. We're finding the circumference, so... Pi times 0.2 doubled, all right, there gives you the diameter, and we get 1.2566. Now, don't clear your calculator, because you want 34 of those, okay, because it turned 34 times, 1.2566, all right, and then it asks us to write the answer, and you get, oops, sorry, you get um, 42.73, uh, and it asks us to round it to the nearest metre, 43 then. Okay, next question. Question 11. Oh, typical. Uh, oh, sorry. There we go. I'll rub that out in a second. So, we've got a quadratic graph here. All right. Um, and I'm just going to rub that out quickly. Oh, come on. Uh, won't let me. Right, anyway. We've got our... There uh, we've got that there we and we're going to put the numbers in now the easiest number to put in is zero now when I put zero in for x there I just end up with minus three now you should know that a quadratic graph looks like that or if it's negative x squared it's going to look like that now it's not negative x squared so it's going to be this one here and the points are going to repeat so therefore that must be naught we've got almost a line of symmetry down there in the table, okay, and this one's going to be five. You can stick your numbers into here and here, but I think you'll find that that will be the case. We now um, plot the points on the graph, so minus four, five, okay, goes there, um, minus three, zero, goes there, minus two, minus three, goes there, and then it goes all the way up here, and, oh, I'm being an absolute muppet. I plus in the wrong place now. You see, make sure you check your solutions, folks. It's probably a good idea. And there we go, and we get our parabola, which is what that looks like there. Okay, so if you don't get that sort of shape, you know you've gone wrong. It should be a nice smooth curve, drawn freehand, and all that. So Next question. So here we go. We've got, uh, I'm just going to make that a touch smaller so it fits on the screen. Next question is Helen's savings increase from 155 to 16740. What percentage increase is that? Now, when you're finding percentage change, okay, we need to find the difference between the two, divide by the original times by 100. So every single time, this is increase or decrease. Okay, find the difference between uh, what you started with and what you finished with. Okay, divided by 100, so that's £12.40 in this case, so £12.40 divided by the original amount, 155, times 100 makes it a percentage, 8%. The answer will be a fairly nice number. Okay, so just bear that in mind. If you get a really horrible number, um, it's probably worth having another look. It might be, but it doesn't, doesn't stop it being a really horrible number, but you never know. Right, here we go. Now, Joe's savings increased by 4.5%. His savings are now £125.40. So, whatever his original amount was, times 1.045. Now, hopefully you've seen that. Um, this is 100% plus the 4.5%. Okay, you've got 104.5% of what you started with. Now we know that that's £125.40. 
Right, so therefore if I want this, I'm going to have to rearrange that. Okay, and if I'm finding an original, it's always divide. Okay, and again, stuff that in the calculator, 120. Again, these are normally nice round numbers, so if you don't get a nice number, you probably want to check that. Right, next question. Standard form. Pretty, pretty straightforward standard form initially here. All right, we've just got to write stuff in standard form. Now, I do it, and I know before people shout at me, I realise the decimal point doesn't actually move, but actually pictorially, it's quite nice to show it like this. So I should, you should know that standard form is always times 10 to the power or something. Okay, and we also know that the number at the front has got to be between 1 and 10. So I'm going to count this until I get a number between 1 and 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay, and that's going to give me 7.6. And because it's gone right 5, the decimal point is to the power minus 5. Similar thing with this 1.6 times 10 to the 8. I need to move the decimal point 8 places that way. I, before, don't shout at me. I'm, this is just so that you can count the stuff. It makes it easier to do it in my experience. So, get 16 when I do that. Uh, and it, I think it's seven zeros, and then it's one, two, three. So if you look here, you can check your decimal point started here, and it went one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Fantastic. So there you go. Now, next one, I'm just going to go up a tiny bit. Now, when you're doing calculations with standard form with your calculator, right, you can use what's known as the EXP button or on some calculators the times 10 to the X or something like that. But that basically stands for times 10 to the power of. Okay, so in my calculator what I would do, it says I've got to find how many times bigger the Pacific is than the Arctic. So I do the Pacific amount. So this is what I'd type into my calculator. All right, these are the buttons I'd hit, EXP8, and I'm going to divide that by the Arctic size. EXP7, right? Yeah, it comes out with a uh, quite not a very nice number, but there you go. Uh, 143. It says find the correct to so the nearest integer. Now, integer, if you don't know, is the posh math word for whole number. So, nearest whole number to that, 11. Okay, so the EXP button, really useful if you've got standard form and doing calculations. Right, know how to use it. It's sort of pretty crucial to know how to use your calculator, so make sure you take it to class if you're not doing your um, exams this year. Right, here we go. A quo invest um, 40,000 Hong Kong dollars for three years at 2.5% compound interest. Compound interest, you find 2.5% of the amount in your account, so that includes any interest accrued from previous years. So, way to do this is write your 40,000, all right, to increase by 2.5% by means times 1.025, all right, and that's for three years. So I'm doing it three times. Just don't find 2.5% and then times it by three and add it on. That doesn't work because it doesn't take into account the interest from previous years. Chuck that in my calculator. I end up with uh, 43075.6. So I'm going to round that to, uh, well, whatever. I'm going to round that to the nearest whole number. That would be fine. Okay, so remember, the increase uh, percentage, one point something, and then to the power of how many years it's... Right, now we're going on to question 15. Uh, pretty standard stuff here. Um, 8 times 7, 56. D times D, D squared. Um, with these, I'm going to do this with a table, and you'll see why. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right, you'll see why. So this reminds me to multiply everything in the bracket by what's next to it. So that 4 times 3e is 12e, 4 times minus 5 minus 20, 12e minus 20. Now I realise doing a table is probably a bit um, over the top for that, but when we come to this, I think this is the best way of avoiding making silly mistakes. So we do a table, okay, x times 2x, 2x squared, x times 1, 1x, 3 times 2x, 6x, and uh, 3 times 1 is 3. Now, we can now simplify these two, the 2x uh, bits, I suppose. 
Right, so we get 2x squared plus 7x plus 3. Now, when you do these, everyone, not everyone, lots of people forget that there should be four parts come out, all right, and then you, um, you simplify at the end. Okay, next one, right, we've got a right angle triangle. That should immediately say Pythagoras or trigonometry to many of you. All right, this one involves an angle, so therefore it's trigonometry, and it asks us to find a PQ, which is this length here. So I'm going to label the sides from the point of view of the angle. That's the hypotenuse. This is the opposite, so therefore, and we should know so Katoa, or however you remember it, uh, Toa. Now, which one of those uses the opposite and the hypotenuse? Well, that's so, so sine of the angle equals um, opposite over hypotenuse. Now, to rearrange that, because I want x, I just do 12.2 times sine 38. All right, chuck that in my calculator, make sure on your calculator, and it says to three significant figures as well, make sure your calculator has a D on it, or a DEG, all right, for degrees. If it has an R or a G, please change the mode to DEG, otherwise it won't get that right. All right, so there we go. Now, uh, we're on question 17. Oh, paper cups now, or paper clips, sorry, not paper cups, or the Muppet. Anyway, it's early in the morning, hence the low voice. Okay, so paper clips sold in small boxes and large boxes, a total of 1,115 paper clips in four small, so that, four small, five large boxes. So I'm going to actually make a simultaneous equation. Four S's, four smalls plus five larges, gives me a total of 1,115 paper clips. All right. Next one, 530 paper clips, three small, two large. So we're going to go three small plus two large gives me 530. Now, in all, when we do simultaneous equations, we need to get the same amount of one of the letters. I'm going to times this one by three and this one by four. That will give me the same amount of S's. So when I do that, I'm just going to draw a line under that to separate them out. We've got 12S plus 15L equals 3, 3, 4, 5. I'll do the bottom one. Remember to multiply through by everything. So 12S, now that's sort of the point of doing what we're doing, get the same amount of one of the letters. 8L, and we're going to have uh, 2,120. Now, I need to get rid of the S's, which means I have to subtract the two equations. No S's, 7L's, and 1,225. Now, if 7L's are 1,225, 1L, one therefore, is 175. Once I've done that, I then use my, um, use my answer here for L is 175, to find out, I put it into the top one, doesn't matter which one you put it into, you can check it by putting it into both actually. So 5 times 175 gives me 1,100. All I've done is swap this here for this up here. Okay, that gives me um, 4 S's are worth 240, so that should be an equal, so therefore 1 S has got to be 60 paper clips. So a small box contains 60 paper clips and a large box contains 175. Right, last question for this section, we've got a box plot. So here we go, box plot. Now, reading off the box plot, lower quartile is eight. I've already marked that. Median is 11, so I'm gonna put a median of 11 here. Here we go, uh, so. Uh, right, 10 squares is 5, so therefore everyone is 2 squares. There you go. Oh, very straight. Nice. Well done. Uh, greatest number is 22, so I need to put a little thing there, and we need to do that. Now, filling this in, smallest number is going to be, well, let's go 6 squares, so that's 3. And the upper quartile goes 4 squares beyond 15, so that's going to be 17. Lovely. All right. We go... Down here it says, find an estimate for the number of lemon trees with eight or more lemons on. So, eight or more lemons, there's eight. Oh, that's the lower quartile, all right, lower quartile. Now, quarter, quartile means that 
75% therefore are more than 8. Okay, so if I find 75% of 60, I will get my answer. All right, now they, they started asking those quite a lot, so just be aware, they're all over the place. Okay, and tune in for part three if your target raises A or A star, basically. Here we go.